Hello, Donald Green here with another video from if it hits the fan.blogspot.com. Today I uh, got this uh, cold steel trail boss axe a couple days ago, and one of the first things I need to do is make a mask for it or, or sheath or cover, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using a very simple uh, design that uh, I learned from uh, Dave Canterbury. So, um, you can see what I've done so far is I cut this slot, that's where the handle's going to go. And I'm going to put a uh, bunch of two holes here so that it doesn't rip any further. And then cut it so that this folds over, this folds over, the bottom folds up, and the top folds over. And then I'm going to lace it. So I'm going to take you through this, uh, through these steps and uh, show you how easy it is to do. It's going to be rough looking, but uh, it's going to be effective and usable. So hope you enjoy this video. Thanks. First thing I'm going to do is poke the holes right here. And what that's going to do is again keep the uh, keep that cut that I made from splitting any farther. Run this in here. And it'll ride right there. So I need to cut some material because I got way too much on here. So I need to get it right here where the uh, end of the axe is. I'm going to overlap it just a little bit. here to get rid of the excess. So that'll fold over like that. So of course we gotta get rid of this upper part too. You just kind of eyeball it a little bit to line it up. Again this doesn't have to be perfect, this is just a primitive cover. Always better to have a little bit extra than not enough because you can't add leather to it but you can always take some off if you need to. So that part will go over like that. that. So let's get the back side next. Again we're going to cut off some of this extra. This knife I'm using is uh, Mitch Mitchell from Native Survival. Uh, he designed it and sells it on his website. It's got it for Christmas, so I haven't used it a whole lot, but it's a nice Scandi grind. Micarta, full tang, spacers, good solid uh, pins holding the handle on, and uh, so I got brass bolsters in here for the uh, for a lanyard or something. Nice uh, 90 degree angle here. It's very flat. Very it's, as you can see, it's real sharp. So, we've got this part, we do this part here, and we'll come down, Hard work on this angle here with the camera, but uh, alrighty. So now the basics are all here, and again, we'll fold this one over, this one over, this one up, 
and then this one over, and that gives it a good cover. I need to cut off a little bit more here, about another inch on that end. So the key is going to be how am I going to attach this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this deer antler button right here. And then I'm going to punch here. There. Here, and here, and we'll see how they line up. You know, the old saying, uh, measure once, cut three or four times, and cuss a lot. Flip it over, and let's see. Punch. All right, so I've got my holes punched, flipped it back over, and I'll run this through here. Use a length of 550 cord. A little bit longer is better than a little bit too short. And I'll show you why the method to my madness with that here in a minute. Turn the ends so they don't unravel. Gonna be the first one that we do. Let's make this hole just a skosh bigger. side. Like this. Through here. And so this deer button, deer antler button right here to wrap it around. But what I'm going to do on this end is tie a quick knot so it never comes out completely. And 
hold it. Still get the axe through there. Probably gonna trim a little bit of this off here, so I'm just gonna mark it for later. Alright. So I have my axe head covered so it's nice and safe to carry. I need to figure out where I'm going to put this, so let's mark it. I can't get through there, can I? I'm going to eyeball it, because that's the way I do things. Take it back out. This I'm going to use a smaller hole. I'm going to be just running sewing thread through it. This is actually a waxed bank line. The way I like to do it is to double up. What I'm going to do, so this is the outside, so we want to come in from the inside first. And tie it off down here on the back side. And I probably put too many knots on the back of my stuff, but I like to be extra secure. It's not going anywhere on that side. I'm running that up through there. And here's where I usually stab myself a couple times. Now what we want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a piece of leather under here because I don't want to get it too tight. I have room to run the 550 cord. I'm going to run that in there as use a spacer. And I just run a couple more. Passes through there. And on the 
back side. Yeah, let's do one more just for giggles. There, if I can get it. Through the through the loop, so we kind of half hitch it a little bit. Yeah, we'll do one more for good measure. All right, so let's see how this works. Max through. Roll that over. Let's just cut this little piece off here, remember. I set up on the front. See, I got it hooked on part of the thing. So, that over. Loop it under there. It's probably way too long, so at this point, put it right here. Burn it again. So it never comes out. All right, I got a axe cover that's gonna, or a mask that's gonna keep my axe protected, protect me from getting cut accidentally, and it uh, kind of looks pretty cool. You can make it as fancy or as primitive as you want. Uh, I've seen them done with raw hides. I've seen them engraved and stamped and sanded and made beautiful. So uh, this one I'll probably finish with some beeswax uh, to seal the outside of it. But uh, for the time being, that'll do me. So this has been another if it hits the fan.blogspot.com video. I'm Donald Green. I thank you for joining me and I thank you for watching our videos and checking out our blog. Have a good day.